Hello and welcome to U Plus AI's YouTube channel called Startup Reports. I am Raka and I, in this channel, review products and services offered by startups at the intersection of healthcare and artificial intelligence. In this episode, we review the work of OmniLife. The mission for OmniLife is that they increase access, affordability, and quality of organ transplantation. In terms of organ transplantation, the organs that can be typically transplanted today are kidneys, which are the most popular, then we have livers, heart, and sometimes the pancreas. There could be others too, but these are the uh, more common ones. Uh, from what I could see, OmniLife is working across the spectrum, but I think their key focus is on kidney transplants. Kidney transplants are also the more prevalent or the popular transplants that happen. For example, in the US, um, the statistics say that there are nearly 27,000 um, organ transplants per year. Now, when an organ transplant happens, there needs to be a donor. The donor is typically a person who has died but who has given consent for his organs to be harvested and his family is also consented. So that qualifies a donor. The recipients are typically on a waiting list and they are waiting for a particular organ. So what happens is once the person dies or is declared dead, the organs are harvested and uh, transplanted to one or more individuals. The sad thing about this is that uh, around 5,000 organs recovered organs are not transplanted per year due to various reasons. This, you know, if you just consider kidney transplants alone, the loss is about 5.8 billion a year and that's pretty huge. More worrying there is that there are so many patients on the wait list that around 7,000 patients die per year just waiting for an organ to be transplanted. So. It would be clear that if some of these discarded organs can, may be recovered or may be transplanted to suitable recipients, then a key thing would be that the number of deaths per year of patients who are on the wait list would reduce. So OmniLife is working on that problem. OmniLife uh, wants to reduce the number of discarded organs that were initially offered for transplant. Uh, the key thing they want to do is they want to reduce the time between the initial offer of the organ and the final transplant decision. And to enable that, they want to get quick communication going throughout the transplant process. So what has OmniLife AI really built? They have built a very custom chat application called TXP Chat. And essentially it's customized for the organ transplant communication. The key thing about this and you know, from what I read is that, you know, from the time an uh, organ is offered for transplant to the time it is actually transplanted and during that time, the decision for transplanting it takes place. There is a lot of communication that has to go in between, you know, the donor team and the recipient team. And there's all sorts of stakeholders involved, right from the donor's family to the recipient's family, um, to the transplant coordinator. Um, the uh, the surgeons on both sides and it's 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 got to be very close knit teamwork and also time is a key factor because the organs can be harvested from the dead person only in a certain window of time and then the organs must be preserved before they are transplanted to the recipient so time is of the essence here and key communication is the essence so what TXP chat is that it's a single communication platform or a chat platform so that the information is all consolidated in one place and not sprinkled over phone, email, text and whatnot. The other key point that what OmniLife has done is that in this workflow, in this communication platform, surgeons should be engaged only when their input is necessary and only when they have to take the key decision of trans of transplanting. Now, any pre-work and post-work, the surgeons don't really need to be involved. So, the chat workflow ensures 
that the right people are engaged at the right time. Now, this is an image that I got from the OmniLife AI uh, website. It basically shows on the left uh, how the chat flow happens between the doctor, maybe the transplant coordinator, and let's say somebody in the recipient's family. Right? I'm, I don't expect you to read through that, but essentially know that this is a custom chat application that is, first of all, it's secure and it's HIPAA compliant messaging. It allows to capture all aspects of the organ transplant, like maybe it's audio, maybe it's video, everything within the same application. The key thing is it allows for auditing. So, it, you know, all of these messages or a chat thread could be saved. And tomorrow, if there's an audit and somebody wants to see what happened during that workflow, all of the information is there. So it ensures transpa transparency and accountability. Moreover, here artificial intelligence is used to basically pop up the data that is of most relevance to the particular stakeholder at the time of the organ transplant. Also AI is used for predicting certain outcomes. For example, given all the factors, um, the AI may pop up what is the likelihood of this transplant succeeding and that information may be relevant to the surgeon. It may also pop up, given all the data, how long would a patient have to wait for the next kidney if this were to be rejected for any reason. So what's my take? This <clears throat> TXP chat application from OmniLife shows us that a purpose-built communication platform can make a huge difference. So it's not, a, it's not a generic chat application like WhatsApp or WeChat, but it's very purpose-built for organ transplantation. And it consolidates all the communication around the transplant into that application. And by doing so, it really speeds up the decision-making between so many people involved in the transplant. So I think that's a really key benefit. The next aspect that I think is important is that here AI is used as a decision support tool. For example, for the surgeon, the AI can predict the likelihood of transplant success, knowing all the data about the donated organ, about the donor, about the recipient, and about the time that's available for the exchange to happen. For the recipient, the AI predicts the wait time for the next best offer. For example, if the recipient were to choose to not take the offered organ at this moment, then the patient would most likely want to know how long would he or she have to wait before the next best offer could be made in his or her case. And that would be very valuable information for the recipient to decide what to do with this offer. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the perspective. If you did, please like this video in the YouTube channel. Do connect with me on LinkedIn and follow my online handle U plus AI on Twitter, SoundCloud and Medium. I'll see you again in the next episode. Thank you.